In this lecture, we're going to look at the three major sects of the Hindu tradition. But I want to start by taking a look at this image over here. You see there's three images, and the one at the top is Brahma. And Brahma is obviously closely related to Brahman, uh, but it is the personification of Brahman as a personalized kind of deity. And so uh, we see right away in this idea that the ultimate source itself, Brahman, is completely unknowable. You can't conceive of it. You can't even worship it or pray to it. Uh, and that is, uh, in fact, true that, that those who pursue the more philosophical and meditational paths, uh, they may engage in some amount of deity worship, but, uh, but primarily what they're after is this direct realization of God, and that's not really a kind of worship. It's more of a, a direct realization of, of this ultimate reality itself. So we have Brahma being the creator deity, and uh, he is sitting in part of this Sanskrit character, which is Om. Remember that Om is a mantra, and it's the sound through which creation took place. Uh, so we have a creator deity there, and then we have, on the bottom left, we have Vishnu, and on the bottom right, we have Shiva, two of the other uh, really important deities throughout Hindu history. And so the idea here is that uh, there are three deities, uh, and of course, a vast multiplicity of gods that, that extend uh, beyond that, but... In the end, the ultimate reality itself is sort of hidden. It's beyond conception. It is, uh, it is not um, a particular deity one can visualize or communicate with or have a relationship with. And that's why it's so important in a tradition like Hinduism to have personalized deities that people can connect with in a, in a more human way. And so uh, this Trimurti, as it's called, the three images, this is a very ancient version of that relationship between the various different gods and the ultimate source. Um, and ultimately, uh, Brahma himself will go out of favor, and he's not much worshipped these days, not entirely missing, but not uh, worshipped primarily. Um, as we'll see when we look at the three sects, the figure that replaces him is uh, the goddess, uh, which can take many forms, but the idea of, uh, of a, a feminine form of goddess, uh, especially the idea of power, it becomes very important. Before moving on, I just want to say uh, something about how that idea relates to the Trinity. Obviously, there's three elements, uh, and in that sense, there's also a Trinity, but I do think there's a deeper connection between them, and that is that if we think about the Trinity, uh, we really have the same kind of idea, uh, that you have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, uh, but God itself is somehow not identical to those manifestations of God or those ways that we could conceive of God or the ways that God interacts with us in the world. That somehow God itself, the, the God that's in the middle, uh, is somehow transcendent. We might say, just as we did with the Hindu tradition, that it is ultimately beyond conception, uh, that this is, uh, this is uh, that from which the ways that we can conceive of God arise, uh, and yet we can't really ever get back to what uh, is typically called the Godhead, the source of the three versions of God that we have in the Christian tradition. And I just want to leave you with a question that we can discuss in class, and that is, uh, if we look at the Hindu tradition, people will generally say that it is a polytheistic tradition, and that's no surprise, and it should be noted that in addition to those three deities, that there is a lot more deities in the Hindu tradition than there are in the Christian tradition. And yet, uh, when we look at that, uh, uh, there still does seem to be some ultimate sense in which it's monotheistic. There's really one ultimate source. And how would we compare that with the Christian tradition? Uh, there are three versions of God, three ways that God manifests itself to us. And uh, should we think of those as polytheistic? Uh, or it's, is it monotheistic because ultimately there is a Godhead? Uh, if it's the latter, then does that mean that we also should regard Hinduism as a kind of monotheism? On the other hand, uh, if it is the former uh, and... Uh, uh, there are, in fact, you know, 
we should think about Christianity as polytheistic, then um, does that violate the fundamental precepts of, uh, of Christian theology, which is that it's a monotheistic tradition. So I'll leave it at that. We'll talk about that more in class uh, and uh, take a look at some of the material here. We're going to go on and uh, I'll talk about each of the different sects individually.